glad to have you watching today with Marilyn and Sarah. I was praying about our time together and really how does the Holy Spirit want to minister to you? Because I know this beyond the shadow of a doubt, the Holy Spirit wants to connect with you and help you, encourage you, strengthen you and minister to your heart. So the verse that the Holy Spirit dropped in my heart for you is Isaiah 55 verse 11. And it says this, the Lord will continually guide you and satisfy your desire in scorched places, give strength to your bones. You'll be like a well-watered garden and the spring of water whose waters don't ever fail. And many of you watching right now, you need direction from God. And it says in this verse right here that God will continually guide you, that there will be abundance in a place where there's been scorched and, and um, where there's been deficiency and shortfall, there will be abundance there. God wants to encourage you as well that God is going to strengthen you. Some of you watching right now, you feel just absolutely drained, depleted. God is going to strengthen you. So we just know that God has answers. And I love this. This always encourages me. God has more answers than I have questions, more provision than I have needs, and more solutions than I have problems. <laughs> that always encourages me. So hop on the phone, get on the website. We want to pray for you. We know that God answers prayer and absolutely has all those resources available for you just for the asking. Mom, you know, we're doing a, a teaching today is super powerful on the blood covenant. Right, right. Wow. I mean, that's right. like a really deep, heavy topic. But how do we how do we deal with that? Well, the blood topic is very, very important because it has to do with covenant. So you have to kind of go Old Testament and see how important the blood is. You know, when Cain killed his brother Abel, it said that the blood of Abel cried from the ground. And so that you know, that was a dangerous thing. That says to me that blood has a voice. And so if that blood can speak of Abel, what about the blood of Jesus Christ? And it says, New Testament says it speaks better things than the blood of Abel. So the blood is key for life. And when I look back at Jesus, you know, they pierced his side and out came blood and water. And then, of course, you know, how he sweat drops of blood. So we see a lot of blood involved, you know, in the crucifixion. But to see how important that blood is, is extremely key to us. So I want to share with you today just various things that I think will encourage you about the blood of Jesus. Because I think we all think, oh, the blood of Jesus cleanses me from all sin. And it says, you know, he is faithful and just to forgive us of all sin. So we know that the blood is a cleansing agent. It's wonderful. But the blood also speaks for you. So what does it say? It says you are in covenant. Now in the Old Testament, they did circumcision. And so there was blood shed there. So that said, I was in covenant. But in the New Testament, our hearts are circumcised, Sarah. So I think that's so key for us. So that's why when people say, you know, and I got born again, I changed what I like to do. You know, I used to like to take drugs. I used to like all this. And suddenly I didn't want to do that anymore. Why? Because the blood of Jesus circumcises your heart. And that puts you in a covenant. So when God looks at you, he sees you through the blood of Jesus. So that is very, very key for us. And that blood is speaking. So do I realize, do you realize the blood is speaking for you every day? And what is it saying? It's saying better things. It's not saying, oh, Sarah, you know, she blew it. She yelled at her kids this morning. Oh, Sarah, she should have gotten more done. Look how dirty her house is today. That's not what the blood is saying. It's saying the blood of Jesus overcomes the devil. So it's very, very key for us. So I'll tell you how I pray. And I pray the blood of Jesus over myself, of course, over my house, my car, what I'm doing that day. But I pray the blood over my family because I want the blood to speak better things. So I pray the blood of Jesus over Reese, over Sarah, you know, Reese is her husband, over each of my grandchildren and what they're going to see in the day because I want the blood 
to be speaking better things. Well, what are better things? Well, that they're successful, that they're healthy, that, you know, they're not caught up in just junk and trash. Are you glad I prayed that way? Absolutely. <laughs> I totally want all the prayer I can get. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> but I love this about the blood. Now, do I always feel adequate about everything because, well, you know, I'm born again. Uh, the blood of Jesus speaks for me. But sometimes I see where I may have missed it or I have some wrong attitudes. Like the other day, the Lord said to me, you know, this attitude is a pride attitude. You, you need to repent of it. And so the blood of Jesus says that. But then I could say, well, because of that, I had to repent of it. But the Bible says the blood gives me boldness to enter into the Holy of Holies. My goodness. Do you realize you can speak to the mountain and the mountain will move? You know, Jesus said, whosoever shall say to this mountain, be thou removed, cast into the sea, shall not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. How can I be bold about that? Because of the blood. And that blood is so powerful. That blood is speaking better things. That blood gives me boldness. And you can say, well, I'm not a spiritual so-and-so, and they do that. The blood of Jesus is your boldness. So that is very, very key. So I'm going to share about some things when I knew you were really in an attack. And I didn't know it with my brain, but I had a dream. And in the dream, it was terrible. You were being very, very attacked. I was in Japan at the time. I think you were in Germany. And I remember I, I was so distraught. I got out of the bed in that hotel room and I began to walk the floor and pray the blood of Jesus, you know, the blood of Jesus. And I would say that to you today. You need absolutely to apply the blood of Jesus to your children, your grandchildren, your family, yourself, and all of these things because mm, we overcome the devil by the blood of the Lamb, the word of our testimony. We love not our lives unto death. Ugh. So you say, Marilyn, you're going through all this so fast. So that's why we have this special CD on the power of the blood and then transformed in triumph. And this, say a little bit about this because they need to have it. Yeah, this booklet, Mom, um, the Holy Spirit started dealing with me about the cross yes. and the importance of the cross. And, you know, as a, as a believer, fellow, fellow Christian, you know, we, we acknowledge Jesus died on the cross. And it's almost like we check the box. It's kind of this perfunctory, you know, done, right, right, been there, right. done that, God's T-shirt. But um, the power of the cross and what that means in our daily living and the transformation and the triumph for us through that is super essential. So, and I love that it's a booklet because it's short, concise, like super tight and uh, easy to digest and pass around too. I love this. This is a missionary. You can pass it on. Not everybody will listen to the CDs, but you can because you want to really get this inside you. You want to utilize the power of the blood in your lifestyle. So you need the CDs, but you need this just as a quick reminder. I like these small books. They fit in your Bible. You know, you can pass them on. It's just easy. And this package is easy and very powerful. And maybe you're saying today, I am having such an attack from the enemy. Oh, from all sides. Well, call us for prayer. And when you call us for prayer, get the packet on the blood. Now, Sarah, I read a little bit about the blood covenant among the Arabs and among the Africans. And so when they wanted to have tribal peace, a smaller tribe would come to a big tribe and they would cut their wrists and the blood, they would join the blood together. And so they would say, we are blood brothers. And so they would say, we are friends. Now, I think that is so interesting knowing that little bit about it, I don't know a whole lot, but just that little bit about when Abraham offered Isaac, put him on an altar. And then, you know, God spoke to him twice through an angel and brought a sacrifice and he removed Isaac. And after that, 
Abraham is called the friend of God. Why? They're covenant friends. And God supplied the blood for you to be in covenant to be his friend. Mm. I like friendship with God. How about you? So I'm going to tell you something you'll think kind of frivolous or silly, but I'm going to tell you anyway. Uh, the other day I was driving to our office to church and uh, they're along the highway, you know, they're building new buildings. And so they were working on a high, tall building and the Lord said, that's your building. Really? What would I want with that building? And the Lord said, this is your building to pray over. So every time you pass this building, I want you to pray over the men who are working on it because they were putting the glass in it, that they will be born again and spirit filled. And I want you to pray that the people who move into this building, even the maintenance people, are going to be born again and spirit filled. This is your assignment. Now, I at first I, was, I thought, that seems so unusual. But you know, God is my friend because we're in covenant through the blood of Jesus. And friends talk about very personal things. So today, when I was coming, you know, to do our television, there was my building. There's my assignment. And so I prayed over that. And friendship with God is not, I think people get all afraid, but the blood of Jesus gives us, what can I say, boldness, but also it says we get close to him through the blood. The blood of Jesus makes me so close to him that I'm one with him in Jesus. Now, we're going to be right back. I've just really begun and you've got to get hold of this. And I want to say to all our partners, Sarah and I just love you. We appreciate you so much. And we pray the blood of Jesus over you. But remember, there's much more and that is going to continue to give you faith and boldness. Watch now. As Christians, we only think of Jesus' blood as the agent that cleansed sin from our lives. But His shed blood has accomplished far more. For your gift of $25 or more, we will send you Marilyn and Sarah's new two-CD set, The Power of the Blood. This set, which includes five anointed teachings, will open your eyes to the spiritual realities we can enjoy because of the shed blood of Jesus, our great physician. We will also send you Sarah's booklet, Transform or Triumph. We often lose sight of the fact that Jesus' suffering on the cross provided life-changing transformation that we can tap into every day. In this booklet, Sarah shares historical insight, biblical examples, and personal revelation about the brutal yet awe-inspiring work of Jesus' death on the cross. Discover and enjoy the full benefits available to re-energize your daily life through the transformational power of the blood. Call or click today for this valuable resource. So glad you're watching. And of course, if you haven't yet collected or picked up um, your CD series here on the power of the blood and my booklet on Transform for Triumph, of course, you want to get on the website, call right now and grab these because I'm serious. Um, what you're hearing today is helpful, but it's better if you can get it and lock it in so you can have it on repeat. Because for me, I know when I hear things the first time, I don't always 
get everything that I know God wants me to hear. So having these available to you, you can read it, you can listen to it at your leisure, hop on the phone, get on the website, huge resources, very helpful for you and really good for like little Bible studies, book clubs, those kinds of things, really, really helpful. So mom, we're talking on the blood covenant right? and uh, you've talked about being friends with God and you talked about Abraham, you know, and Isaac and Genesis 22. So what else do we know about the blood covenant? How does it relate to us today? The blood covenant is protection for us and the blood speaks for us, but it speaks better things. But the blood overcomes the devil. So I'm going to share one time I was in Pakistan and we were having meetings and I think it was the third time I was there. And they said that 31 suicide bombers had taken an oath to blow up the place where we were going and to kill me they caught 17 of them. So they said, well, you can't use the stadium. And, you know, of course, fear came in my heart. Oh, you know, I don't want to go home in a box. <laughs> but that scripture came to me that you overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb, the word of your testimony, and you love not your life unto death. And so I began to say, I have the blood of Jesus over me. And I finally just told the devil, you know, if you kill me, you're going to make me a martyr. I'm going to get more people saved in my death than in my life. And taking the blood and speaking it like that, I'm telling you, we had a wonderful meeting and we didn't even have time to advertise it. We had it outside in the streets. We have video of this and we had over 30,000 people. How did they know to come? And so taking the blood over your circumstances, over your family. How do you do that? I do it every day. I do it first thing in the morning. I say, good morning, Father. Good morning, Jesus. Good morning, Holy Spirit. This is your beloved Marilyn. Then I take the blood of Jesus over myself, over my car, over my house, over things that belong to me. I take the blood over each of my children and each of their children, their mates, because the blood speaks better things. And the blood says, I'm in covenant, you know. I have a relationship here that is very, very powerful. And even saying and speaking the blood gives me a confidence in God. Hey, I'm not just some accident. I'm a divine appointment. I am here because of the blood of Jesus Christ. So this is very key for us, Sarah. So I want you to know every day, you know, you're on my big hit list and I'm hitting that again and again with your children, with your husband and the things that are going on. And sometimes it looks like we're going to lose. So I, I like to take that scripture, thanks be unto God, 2 Corinthians 2.14, who always leads to triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. Because of the blood, I am triumphant because of his blood. And remember the blood of Jesus, when it was shed, he told Mary, you know, don't touch me. I haven't ascended unto my father and your father yet. And he took his blood. So his blood is in heaven speaking better things for us. That is awesome to me. Now you say, well, I have a lot of needs. You know, you're talking about praying over your family. You know, I have a family with lots of things. Wow. And so I would love to have you call. And we have wonderful people who will pray with you, not counsel, but they will pray and apply the blood of Jesus over your loved ones also. But when you call, because you, you watch a quick program, you don't really get it all. You try to. And, you know, most of you don't take notes, I'm sorry to say. But you can get the packet and you can get the CD that has all the points I'm teaching and Sarah will be teaching, plus probably many more than you know. And then, Sarah, you have this beautiful booklet, Transformed for Triumph, which has to do with the blood of the cross. Yep. Oh, awesome power, awesome power. But folks, not just knowing it, but applying it is so important. Now, I think one of my favorite scriptures that I use so much is Colossians 1.20 because the epistles really, really talk about what the blood actively does in your life. And it says, now I'm going to kind of demonstrate this a little bit, 
that the blood of Jesus reconciles us to heaven. It reconciles things. So the blood of Jesus speaks for me in heaven that I'm in the family. I'm in covenant. But it also says it reconciles things on earth. So if I look at the cross, the cross points up and the cross points out. So the blood works for me this way, but the blood also works for me this way. And that is very key for us to know. So I have taken that scripture where there are broken marriages, broken relationships, and I have prayed the blood of Jesus to reconcile people to each other. So when I first saw this and thought, Mm, is that what it really means? There was a man in our church named Joe. He had five children and they were always at church. And then suddenly she got out of sync and got involved with another man. <laughs> Say yuck twice, yuck, yuck. And took the five children and moved to Washington State. Oh, Joe, you know, he, he just was shattered. So I said, now, Joe, we are going to take Colossians 1.20 that the blood of Jesus reconciles things in heaven and that you and your wife are going to be reconciled. So <laughs> every time he came to church, we would talk Colossians 1.20. So he called her and she just cursed him out. Don't call me, leave me alone, you know. And I said, but we have the blood of Jesus and it speaks better things than what Karen is speaking. So we just took Colossians 1.20. So, you know, it's about a year and nothing good has happened and he's missing his children and she wouldn't even let him talk to the children. And so I said, now, Joe, don't give up. It's through faith in his blood that we're saved. Through faith in his blood, we are reconciled. The blood can reconcile. If the blood is good enough to reconcile you to the Father and so powerful, it's powerful enough to reconcile this marriage. So we just kept quoting that scripture. And one night, I'll never forget, on a Wednesday night, he came to church and he said, Marilyn, Karen called me today and she said, Joe, if you still want me, come get me and the children. <laughs> and so, you know, he forgave her. He went and got her, got the children, and they were absolutely reconciled. But I think one of the warmest things for me is that... <laughs> I see the children, they're adults now, and they work in the airport here in Denver, and they'll say hello to me, and they're just so sweet, and I think, <clears throat> Colossians 1.20 works. So it'd be good for you if you want to have a reconciliation. Now, I've prayed this for people who got mad at me. Maybe I didn't do it all right, I had to repent, but I asked that the blood of Jesus would reconcile. And I've seen it in just friendships. One time in Pakistan, a big leader got really angry with me. And I'm going to tell you, I was innocent. <laughs> you say, probably not altogether, probably not. But, you know, I thought, oh God, I need this leader. So I began to pray the blood and he got in touch with me and said, you know, I'm sorry, I misunderstood you. The blood of Jesus works when you put faith in his blood. So I really, really want you to be sure. Be sure you get the packet. Folks, without the blood of Jesus, we would not be going to heaven. Without the blood of Jesus, we would not have an abundant life. Without the blood of Jesus, do you realize we wouldn't have power over the enemy? The enemy could stomp you into the ground. But with the blood of Jesus, we have boldness. We can come close. We can have reconciliation. The Bible says because of the blood of Jesus, we can go into the holiest of holy. We can have the most intimate experiences with him because we're in the blood covenant. Now, don't give up. Don't throw in the towel. Keep your faith in the blood of Jesus Christ. It is so important. Often as Christians, we only think of Jesus' blood as the agent that cleansed sin from our lives. But His shed blood has accomplished far more. For your gift of $25 or more, we will send you Marilyn and Sarah's new two-CD set, The Power of the Blood. 
This set, which includes five anointed teachings, will open your eyes to the spiritual realities we can enjoy because of the shed blood of Jesus, our great physician. We will also send you Sarah's booklet, Transform or Triumph. We often lose sight of the fact that Jesus' suffering on the cross provided life-changing transformation that we can tap into every day. In this booklet, Sarah shares historical insight, biblical examples, and personal revelation about the brutal yet awe-inspiring work of Jesus' death on the cross. Discover and enjoy the full benefits available to re-energize your daily life through the transformational power of the blood. Call or click today for this valuable resource. a process of surrender with Jesus. You know, when he was in the garden, he said, not my will, but thine be done. So he surrendered his will. Then he surrendered his body. And then he surrendered his spirit. And so we want to pray. Sometimes surrender is a process, but I believe yours is beginning today and you will go through the full process of the wholeness of surrender that it brings. It brings the whole life of Jesus. Would you pray about this? Yeah, and resurrection life, oh, right? Yeah. That we walk oh, in yeah. resurrection. So, Father, right. I lift up each person watching right now. I pray that you would give us grace, power, and ability to surrender. I thank mm -hmm. you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for us and for that resurrection life. So I speak resurrection now that as we agree to surrender, that your resurrection power flows into us, flows into those areas of need and deficiency, even those areas of death in our life, that the resurrection power of Jesus would bring resurrection and life and vitality. Thank you, Jesus, for raising from the dead and living big through us. We exalt you today and thank you for your sacrifice, the blood covenant, and the victory that it has purchased for us in Jesus' name. Amen. And of course, if you haven't yet uh, gotten these resources, grab them. Super helpful to you. The Power of the Blood, CDs by Mom and Me, as well as Transformed for Triumph, my booklet um, on the cross and what that means for us. So I know that Jesus has victory for us, victory in our finances, victory in our health, victory in our relationships, victory in our emotions, victory in our minds that literally the, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ has purchased victory for us today. So let's walk out that victory in our daily living even now. Thank you for watching our YouTube channel. We are so thrilled that we get to minister to you on YouTube. So of course, you gotta hit the subscribe button because we wanna continue to get to connect and at your convenience. That's one of the things I love about YouTube is you can watch at your own convenience and when you subscribe, then you get all the latest and the greatest.